Guys, good morning. Happy Thursday. It's Daryl here. It's bright and early, 3 a.m. here in Connecticut on the East Coast. Okay, I'm going to say this. The one thing I think that makes me different than any other channel here on YouTube is I, I think I'm probably the only, the only hardcore recovering heroin addict that's using what I learned through 20 years of mistakes and using it to address political and social problems today. I, I, if there's another channel that's doing this, I don't know of it. I wish I, 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 I didn't. If, if you guys know of one, tell me about it so I could join, join up with them. But I told you guys before, if the only way that I could recover from wasting 20 years of my life by using all of these substances from the time I was 20 till the time I was 40, lying, uh, manipulating, and just using every day in the goal of seeking these substances. Uh, if I just looked at that as 20 plus years of wasted life, I don't know if I would have ever been able to recover from that. Instead, I look at it as what I can take away from that, what it taught me. I take away all the mistakes, I take the mistakes, and what did I learn from them to make me a better person today? That's my goal. That's, that's, what's, that's the only thing, that's the basic thing that got me into recovery. Because if I look back and just threw those 20 plus years away, there's people I know around me that have done that. And I hate to say this, but uh, they're not doing so well in recovery. Uh, people I know have felt this guilt, burden of guilt that they're behind all their peers the same age. You know, look at all the people around me that I went to school with. I'm so far behind them. I'm in debt, you know. And they don't see the, the positive side of the mistakes they made. The lying, the manipulating, the substance abuse, the arrests, the injuries, the hospitalizations. My, my, what's, what's been key in my recovery is taking my mistakes and learning from them. To put it simply, take, taking lemons and making lemonade. All right, so today I want to talk about how I lied and manipulated. There's still many people in my life. I've been clean and sober since October 23rd, 2006. Over 14 years and coming up on four months, I believe. There's still family and friends that will never believe our word I say. They, they won't come out and say that, but I could tell eye to eye. There's people that still avoid me. I have I haven't lied. I don't I haven't had anything in my life that I need to hide. Anything I've done, said, anything that I've had that I've been ashamed of that I need to lie about. But there's people in my life that will never believe me again. And I and I completely understand that. I'm surprised that not everybody that everybody in my life just didn't turn their back to me after how I made them seem so foolish. My family close to me didn't want to believe what was going on. Remember what I just said there, because it's going to come important in about a second, a couple of minutes here. They didn't want to believe it. Every day I would go to my family, and this, this hurts my heart to this day. I would go to my family and friends and lie and manipulate. I'd make up ridiculous stories. After hundreds of days, I would run out of stories and excuses to get money. To why I didn't show up to Thanksgiving, why I didn't show up to Christmas, how I disappeared for four days, how I ended up in jail, and um, nobody, nobody's stupid. You know, people know when they're being lied to, but people, you know, my my family just didn't didn't want to face it. Um, you know, I knew it and they knew it, and I saw it in their faces when I was lying to them, and that hurt me even more. I remember driving away from my mother's house crying. I had the money in my hand. I was going to my dealer. I showed up at my dealer's house, this, this woman dealing heroin, and uh, I was still crying. And um, she asked me why I was crying. And I, I said I had lost somebody that OD'd. I lied. She ended up giving, felt, feeling bad for me and giving me extra, extra substance, which just made me feel even worse. These are the lessons that I take with me as I move forward. Now, this is the reason I bring this up today. Because 
the dishonesty that we've seen in the last week. Now, I did a video on this, and I, this is one of those stories where I feel good that I hit I hit it on the head. Because after I made that video, I saw other media outlets actually talking about all the all the dishonesty that was coming out of Fox News and other outlets this particular week. So it wasn't just me. I, I tell to tell you guys the truth, I love when I catch something early like that, when it clicks and I see something. And I make a video about it, and then a day or two later, I see the media pick up on it. And that, I'll be honest with you guys, that makes me feel good. Or you guys pick up on it, you know, and it makes me feel like I hit the nail on the head. I'm talking about something relevant. All right, the lies, the lies this week. And this is the thing. Senate, uh, Senate Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy it's bad enough when you willingly believe these lies. Let's talk about Camilla Harris and her book. Uh, okay, a book was donated. I think it was a shelter in California, in Long Beach, actually, where this was, with migrant children. They have libraries for the kids to read. Somebody that worked there donated a book. They have this person. They know it was one book donated. It was leaning up against a backpack. Somebody took a picture of this one book. It turned into a giant lie where the GOP, uh, Bobart, McCarthy, the rest of them all took this, twisted it into this thing where taxpayers are paying for welcome kits featuring Camilla Harris's book that they're passing out to all the migrant children coming in. So, Ted, your taxpayers are paying for Camilla Harris's book. Not only are, are they feeding them Camilla Harris's book, but you're paying for it. Millions of them to migrant children. They're brainwashing these poor kids. All a lie. And the actual author, she just, she just resigned from the New York Post. For the longest time, I didn't even realize that the New York Post and Fox News are owned by, both by Murdoch. And the dishonesty that comes out, and you, you can paint this any way you want. It's entertainment. It's not meant to be you know, taken seriously. That's what they always say when they're caught lying. All right. So Monday, Fox News actually came out and talked about the Camille Harris story and admitted they were wrong. Right? The, the person that was tasked at doing or putting her name on the byline for this story quit and resigned. This is a lady that worked for uh, Sean Hannity. She's got a, a history. She met with, she's met a lot of times with Trump. Um, she's, she's a hardcore right-wing person working for the New York News. But she hit her limit with this story. She knew it was false. And she resigned. Her last name's Italiano. I, that stuck in my head. I cannot remember her first name. I'll put all the links below. All right. And she resigned. So this story is false. Without a doubt. Now it's been proven false. It's bad enough that the GOP that, and I'm going to have these tweets down below. Six, seven, ten, twenty tweets from Geo, all, the, all the GOP people that you would, you would imagine jumped on the bandwagon and just trying to infuriate their ba their base. Now, this is why I mentioned my past lying and, and drug use. My parents, my family, all around me, my friends knew I was lying to them. Just like Fox viewers, they know. It's, they, they know Biden bans beef. He's like, you can only eat one hamburger a week. Four pounds a month. Come on, you guys aren't stupid. You know you're being lied to. At least you think you might be being... It doesn't make too much sense. You never heard it. You didn't hear it anywhere else. It doesn't sound right. We all have this instinct. But they want to believe it. They want to... And, and, it's, and, and this is the thing. That they're doing this just to focus anger. Unjustified, unwarranted, dishonest anger. At uh, the, the other half of America. This is the thing now. So Kevin McCarthy... Monday, Fox News, they come out and they admit the Biden beef thing, it was, it was a lie. He, he never said that. It's not in his green deal. It was just a, a study at the University of Michigan. It had nothing to do with Biden or the administration or any plans to do anything about banning beef. All made up. Fox News comes out. Wednesday, yesterday, 
Kevin McCarthy goes on Sean Hannity and repeats it again. Can you imagine that? Joe Biden wants to ban beef? Repeats it again. Now he knows, he knows this is a lie. But he goes on national TV and lies to millions of people, supposedly his, his, his supporters that believe him with all their heart. And he lies right to their faces. These same lawmakers in the GOP won't still are still tweeting about this Camille Harris story, even though it's it's they know it's a lie. The the person that wrote the story admitted it was a lie and quit her job, threw away her career because she didn't want to lie. I'll put these tweets down below. I, I'll put down down below. There'll be about at least seven tweets that are still posted by these GOP politicians. In reference to the Camilla Harris book. And they refuse to take him down, still per perpetrating this lie. Now, this is why I brought this up. You can only lie to somebody for so long. You, they, people know they're being lied to. At this point, millions of people have to know, Republican Trump supporters have to know that this is a lie. That these politicians are lying to them. Just trying to stir up some anger. And they know that. They know that. Down the line, eventually, they're going to lose the trust. Just like I lost the trust of, of a lot of family and friends. And I'll never be able to regain it back. With time comes reflection. And some people just never get over and I can understand this. I can completely understand this. And some people never get over that insult of being lied right to their face. That hurt about caring about something or somebody so much. And having that person lie right to your face and manipulate you. That pain never goes away to, for some people. And like I said, it's been 14 years. And there's people that will never forgive me. That will never believe me again. Even though I, haven't, I, I have not said anything. A single dishonest thing to these people in four, over 14 years. And I never will. But that's not going to take, take away that hurt and betrayal that these people feel. That's what's going to happen to the people that are listening to Kevin McCarthy right now. That are listening, that are reading these tweets. The people that support the right, the Trump voters. I'll put all these tweets down below. These tweets are still up today. These two stories have been proven dishonest. Yet these politicians are pushing patent, patently false, dishonest lies. And not just lies. But li these lies are made specifically to infuriate and anger the people that put their trust in these very people. Betrayal. People don't forget that. Once it all clicks... People never forget that. Take it from me. All right, you guys have a good Thursday.